this represents a four inch pipe which uh, it's joined onto another pipe here and uh, we have a, let's say we'll have a water level about here and we have water flowing down the pipe the water flows down to there goes down over the And this is open, this is a T-joint, so this is open to the air. And the water goes down here, down into the pipe, and out the bottom. When it comes down here, it brings air bubbles with it. Tiny little air bubbles. Uh, just the turbulence and the speed of the water brings the air bubbles down. When the water comes over this, uh, it falls down here and whatever the speed is here, it accelerates water when it's falling, anything when it's falling accelerates due to um, gravity. So something has to take up the extra space and it's air bubbles. So the air bubbles come out here and bubble up all around it and come up to the surface at both sides so. anyway you can imagine this process where this is um, say 30 40 50 centimeters or more of a fall and you can imagine this process, what it might do. You're getting uh, bubbles going down here and the water swirling all around the bubbles. And the water comes out and we we'll use a different colour for that. So there's be a flow of water out here and away to wherever. And these air bubbles rising up there, they're going to cause a flow of water up here and moving away, just a slighter flow of water and moving away in that direction. So we've got the water, a stronger flow down here and um, water coming up this way too. Now, um, one thing about this process is um, there's going to be oxygenation of the water. If you had just let the water come down and just let it fall like a waterfall, it would go down maybe that far air bubbles would go back down the, that far, far and then it would come back straight back up to the surface. So we're, we've gained whatever distance it is here. So it's double, triple or whatever. You can go down quite a long way with the pipe. So you get an oxygenation because the air bubbles are trying to go up, the water is trying to go down. And you get an oxygenation all the way down this pipe. And this water that comes out here is going to be oxygenated. Also, when these bubbles are coming up here, that's also going to be oxygenated. I don't know how much, and I guess nobody else does either. But it's probably be a useful thing if you have a fish pond or... Um, I, I worked for a guy this year, and he had a fish pond. And he had water flowing into the fish pond. Probably just a small little, uh, you know, maybe a one foot drop into the fish pond. Well, he had... Uh, Whatever fish he had in the pond, they all died last year because he had an algal bloom and had uh, too little oxygen. If he had had something like this in his pond, the fish could have congregated around it and maybe survived, you know, in the area just around it. His pond was shallow, but you could have had one deep area with this thing in it. Anyway, uh, if you collected this air down here, uh, uh, you could, oh sorry, you could have, oh wait, wait, 
you can have a chamber down here and collect the air. And you used to use that process and then you could have another pipe going up like this. They used to use that process in the 1800s to um, um, make compressed air. So you would get an air pocket here and the compressed air would be taken away. And they used that, but it went much deeper, um, maybe 30, 40, 50 meters deep. Anyway, um, that process was called a tromp, but of course if you have a tromp here you lose, um, you would lose this if you were strictly into uh, oxygenating your water. So here's another process, and both these processes, the tromp is explained in Wikipedia, and so is this other one. So what people do to, for deep water pumps, sometimes they have uh, a pump up top, and a... So here's a, another, um, Sorry. they have an air pipe and pump air down to the bottom of this. They let air in here. And uh, the air bubbles up in the water. Uh, so you've got thousands and thousands of air bubbles. And they used to do it going down 30, 40, 50 meters and more. And what happens is, instead of water in here, you have a mixture of water and, and air. And the specific gravity lowers. And when you have a lower specific gravity fluid, uh, you'll have the same weight here as out there. But this will come all the way up to the top. And at the top of an airlift uh, pump, it looks like champagne. So you have this continuous bubbling of champagne, water and air bubbles out the top. And this is a way that they use to pump water from very deep wells. But it's a similar, um, it's an upside down version of what's going on here. And way back when, in 1987, something like that, I discovered, I didn't know these, I didn't know these things existed. But I discovered the process anyway, and I had a small, I did this exact same thing, but not deep. It was only going down uh, a couple of feet down, and I had uh, collect, uh, connected uh, a garden hose pipe, a uh, three-quarter inch, which is about, uh, in, internal diameter is about uh, 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 1.2 centimeters. So I, I, a small little pipe, a half-inch pipe, so... 1.2 centimeter internal diameter pipe and I didn't get the um, champagne effect I got pulses of water coming up so and um, so I got pulses of water like this and they came up and out and um, that suited me at the time and um, anyway I, I I made it public because I thought it might be useful to people. And up until this year, so 19, I made it public in um, 88 or 89. Up until this year, nobody has ever said that it works. Um, um, you know, nobody has, you know, basically people have told, told me that uh, you're telling lies, etc., etc. Anyway, this is basically, uh, you could call it a modified, this is called airlift pump. This is modified because it's uh, not working under quite the same circumstances. And I called the collective thing a pulsar pump because the air came up in pulses.